of Trustees, Dr. Griffith, administration, faculty, parents, friends, and the class of 2017. Congratulations. I am humbled and extremely proud to be addressing my fellow graduates today. And I cannot thank you enough for your friendship and support throughout my Rani career. I'd like to express my gratitude to a few of the many people who've helped me achieve this tremendous honor. Dr. Sobieski, Jane Kuya for advising me and showing me the beauty of music. Mr. Matarazzo, mahalo for the laughs and flexibility as a college counselor, dean, and administrator as I work through my coursework and student council presidency. There are many families who helped me along the way, including, of course, my own. Thank you, mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa, for igniting my love for knowledge and compassion from such a young age. My dad was one for NPR in the mornings, which I begrudgingly listened to, and my mom would often take me to work with her at the hospital. Ultimately, these experiences, along with their endless support of my endeavors, shape me into who I am today. Finally, Nicholas, you've literally been with me from the very start. Thank you for being my best friend for 17 years. Now, to look to the future, let me first share an anecdote from the past. The night before my first day of high school, my mom slid a slip of paper underneath my doorway. I saw that it was a quote, and brushing it away as a sappy cliche, I filed it away to the depths of my desk. But as we've all learned at many short points in our short lives, mom is almost always correct. And one long night, when I was particularly struggling, I rifled through my desk and rediscovered this piece of paper. I'll read the quote now, which is from Theodore Roosevelt's speech, A Man in the Arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Graduates, in more modern terms, I think Kendrick Lamar summarizes his first statement well. Sit down, be humble. Support your coworkers, friends, and loved ones. In this increasingly globalized society, you have the ability to connect with people from around the world. Don't use this immense power to criticize and pull down others. Engage in respectful civil discourse as an opportunity to learn, expand your perspective, and become a well-rounded global citizen. As you've heard countless times, we are in an era of immense change. Soon we will be able to go from San Francisco to New York in half an hour. Cars will be driving themselves, humans will be colonizing Mars, and our perception of consciousness will be altered. Yet none of these innovations can be achieved without both taking a leap of faith and persevering through the stumbles and failures with grit and determination. There will certainly be triumphs of high achievements and many failures along the way. But as Wired Magazine says, Beethoven wasn't born Beethoven. He had to work damn hard to become Beethoven. Each one of you has the power to become who you would like to be. It's scientifically proven that when you put in the effort, you will find self-fulfillment. The journey is more important than the end. And when you're pursuing something you truly believe in and are passionate about, you will not and cannot just accept failure. Teddy Roosevelt forewarns, there will be critics along the way. However, I know each and every one of you, and you are by no means timid souls. So don't be afraid to embrace mistakes with open arms. Use your passions to further the world. And if you engage in introspection this summer, 
and I strongly encourage you to do so. Think about how you will leave your mark on the world. Everyone brings their own gifts and talents. I believe one misconception is that the ideal student or person must be a leader, a powerful scientist, and an eloquent writer all at the same time. And if you are, that's wonderful. But equally wonderful is someone who is deeply engaged in their craft and who pursues their passion. In college and beyond, you may, you may feel this pressure to do it all, but listen to your heart. A worthy life is one that makes you happy and beneficially touches the lives of others. So my fellow graduates, dare greatly, but also dare with humility, dare with intention, and dare with compassion. I have no doubt that the future is great for each and every one of us. Thank you.